First off, apologies for the rain, it's Britain and I don't have a garage, so I guess we're doing this. Second to the main meat of the video, replacing your brakes. It's one of the easiest jobs to do at home on your driveway, and it's one of the first things that I ever did when working on my own cars. It doesn't often take all that many tools and is a very easy way for you to save yourself some money. So since I need to replace the front discs and pads on my car and the rear pads, I thought I'd walk you through the process. Now specifically, this video applies to the 2013 Audi S4 and the B8 and B8.5 gen of the S4. However, the brakes on these cars are just standard sliding calipers. It's just the front ones are a little bit bigger than normal. And so this video and that the techniques here will apply to a great majority of not only the standard A4, but the vast majority of the German saloons and estates that you'll find on the roads. So to get out of the brakes, you need to remove the wheel. I'm starting with the near side, the uh, passenger side, the left-hand side, whatever you want to call it, as that's the side with the only brake wear indicator. And so it's the best example for me to show you, but I'll be doing the rest of the wheels as well. Now to get this, uh, to get your access to your brakes, you do need to jack up the car and take your wheel off. Uh, and what I would recommend, unless you have an impact gun to take the wheel bolts out, is to only jack up the car slightly and then use your breaker bar to crack all of the wheel bolts loose and then jack the car up fully and remove the bolt bolts and take the wheel off. When you jack the car up, it's good practice, even though you're unlikely to be directly under the vehicle at any point during this job, to use a jack stand. For me, I have my jack on the side and the jack stand right next to it. And I'm actually using both in conjunction with each other since I don't need to move the jack in or else. So it's sort of a, a double security. I've also got the wheel under the side of the vehicle too for just that final bit of if everything else fails, this should still keep me alive if I do end up going under it. So with the wheel off and the car jacked up safely, you can then take the caliper bracket or the uh, a, a spring clip essentially off the front of the caliper. This looks like a massive pain and to be fair, it kind of is, but the best way to do it is to clamp your hands around it, squeezing it and pulling the little tab that's in the center out of the hole that it's resting in and basically just pulling it away. It might snap at you slightly, but uh, as long as you're careful, it shouldn't spring away or hurt you at all. So just be careful, but basically compress it and pull it off. Then you can look at the backside of the caliper. There are two 13 millimeter bolts on the back of here that you'll need to remove. These are relatively easy to get off. You can use a 3 8 ratchet. There's a, enough leverage there to get them loose. And once they are fully out, you can then wrap your hands around the caliper to pull it, compressing the piston back into the housing so you can lift the caliper off. As you lift the caliper up, both of the pads are likely to be coming with it. The reason for that is that the rear caliper is physically clipped into the piston. So you will need to pop that out from the piston to get it out. Although I should make it clear that that is the pad with the brake wear indicator connected. So you'll also want to disconnect the brake wear indicator by pulling the little tab uh, in the bracket, twisting the connector, dropping it down and then disconnecting it. And then you can feed that wire through the top of the caliper to get the pad out. The outboard pad is held in just by a little dimple in the caliper. So if it doesn't come out with gentle pushing, then a light tapping with the back of your ratchet will get it free. Once you've got the pads out, make sure to support the brake caliper in some way, whether that's laying it on a bucket or using a bungee cord to hold it up. You do not want to be fatiguing and stressing the brake line as that's what carries all the pressure. And because it's a hydraulic system, if that line fails, then there's a good chance that all of your brakes will fail. So just make sure that that's, uh, that's doing it, that's not strained in any way as you support the caliper. Then it's onto the caliper bracket. There are two 21 millimeter bolts that are disgustingly tight holding this thing on. So you will want to turn the steering wheel to the full lock right so that you can get your breaker bar to take those bolts out. Once they're loose, you can run them out and take the caliper bracket off. And then it's just the tiny and painstaking little T30 torque screw that's holding the brake disc on. If you have an impact wrench for this, definitely, 
use it. It makes it so much easier to get these little buggers out. Uh, if you don't, then just be very careful that you don't shear it or snap it with your standard T30 Torx socket and ratchet. Once the tiny bolt is out of the way, the brake disc will just lift off of the hub and then you can start installing your new bits. Now, if you're installing a new brake disc, do make sure to use some brake cleaner and wipe it down as it comes with a thin film of oil to help it not rust in its packaging. But that's also something you want to keep very well away from your braking surfaces. So give it a good clean and then you can put the new disc on in the same or orientation, ideally with a new retaining screw. Then you can reinstall the caliper bracket. The bolts that go in here are torqued to 196 newton meters, or basically as humanly tight as you can get them. So make sure they are good and tight, and then you can look at installing the pads. You'll want to clip either a new brake wear indicator and sensor on if you've burned through your previous one, or if like me, you haven't, clip the old one back on, feed the wire through the top of the caliper and pop the new pad into place and then the outboard pad can also be held in by that little dimple and you can place the caliper back down. It's important to note that you'll likely need to compress the spring pins or the uh, slide pins at the back to get the caliper seated fully and you'll want to make sure that the ears of the pads are resting on the rails of the caliper bracket. According to the manual the two bolts that you took out from the caliper slide pins should be replaced. If you aren't going to be replacing them, I do recommend over torquing them slightly to say 40 newton meters instead of the 30 that the manual recommends and using some blue Loctite to hold them in place and make sure that they don't rattle loose. Don't forget to install the metal spring clip too. It is a pain, but it's necessary and you'd actually fail an MOT in the UK if you don't have it installed. It's the same process of removal. You align it so that it's just slightly too far out, uh, compress it down with your hands and use your thumb to push the tab into the hole and then tap the two edges down so that it's nice and flush. Then it's just reinstalling your wheel. In my case, the bolts get torqued to 120 Newton meters in a star pattern to make sure that you won't be warping your new rotor. Once that is installed, you can uh, push the jack up a bit to take your uh, jack stand out and then drop it down gently. When it comes to the rear brakes, it's a very similar process to the fronts. Assuming that you've jacked the car up and taken the wheel off, do make sure that you turn the handbrake off so that the caliper isn't seized on. Then you'll need to remove the two 13 millimeter bolts that are holding it in. Again, make sure that you pull on the caliper to compress the piston back in. And I found that removing the brake line from its uh, grommeted clamp uh, made it a little bit easier to maneuver it once it was off. So uh, you can try that. Just make sure that you do fit the, uh, that brake line back in into its clamp before you put the wheel back on. Again, make sure that you support the caliper in some way so that it's not resting on the brake line, and then you can remove the pads. These are a little bit fussy. You kind of have to remove them with some light persuasion, but once they're out, uh, they basically just slide out of the caliper and you can uh, either refit them, or if you're replacing the rear disc, again, there is two bolts holding the caliper bracket on, uh, which you need to remove, and then a small screw that holds the disc on. If you are replacing your rear disc, the manual says that you should be replacing the rear caliper bracket bolts, as well as the bolts that hold the caliper onto the slide pins. Uh, those are a torque to 100 Newton meters plus 90 degrees, making them a torque to yield bolt. Next, you can install the pads. The rear pad just slides in through the rails, although the front pad will need to go sort of bottom end in first, past the bracket, and then slide in. Once it's all the way in, you can put the caliper back down. In my case, I had to use some more light persuasion with a rubber mallet and some pry bars to get it, uh, the caliper down and in place properly. But once it's down and in, you can then fit your bolts back in. Again, those should be replaced uh, according to the manual and then torqued to 35 Newton meters. And then that's it. Assuming you do the other side of the car, you are good to go. You've replaced all of your discs and pads and it's a relatively simple procedure. I think it took me around three hours to do uh, all four corners and ended up bleeding uh, and actually doing a full flush on my brakes as well and filming all of this. So it's definitely something that uh, even a, a novice could do 
in a, a day or maybe a, a push over a weekend, but certainly something you could do at home. While I had the car up on jack stands, I did actually get under it to replace the exhaust clamps that I quite thoroughly rusted through and had to replace at the track day. If you haven't seen that video and the failure that happened, then feel free to check it out on the cards or end cards when they pop up. But uh, I did get under and replace them with the, the proper article. My solution that I came up with at the track day worked fine. I passed an MOT with it, but for a bit of extra peace of mind, I did end up replacing them properly. Uh, and what I did was put them the other way around so that the tabs and the bolts were actually up at the top where they're less likely to rust through quite as quickly um, and so they're a little bit more tucked out of the way uh, and hopefully a bit more secure and, and safe uh, they're also slightly longer which helps sealing just that little bit better so yeah the car's in good shape now so that's pretty much it for this video if you have any questions do feel free to leave them in the comments down below if you want to see more videos like this both from reviews guides how to's all that sort of stuff then hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon there is also plenty of other, other videos on the end cards you can check out, and there's a few links in the description if you want to support the channel too. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video.